and welcome to the Glacially Musical Podcast. It is beer, metal, and swearing. Of course, I am Nick Cameron of Glacially Musical, and I am joined by my good friend, my co-host, a man who you never know how fast he's coming. Is he fast? Is he slow? He's always everywhere. Keefe Change Up. How are we doing today, buddy? All righty. Uh, hanging in there. How about you, pal? I've had a day, and I'm glad the day is over, and I even took a short day. So, uh before we get too deep in, thank you very much if you are here for Exodus. Exodus is awesome. We all know that. Today we are discussing Exodus, their third record, Fabulous Disaster, which personally was my introduction, but we'll get into that later. Put a pin in that if you're excited. Here's how we do things. We greet, we beer check, we vinyl check, we shirt check, we talk about news, and then we get to the meat. And the meat of the day, again, Exodus, Pleasures of the Flesh. My meat for dinner, venison. It is presently marinating as we speak in Worcestershire, A1, uh, Tabasco, sake, teriyaki, and a little bit of soy sauce and garlic salt. I see I see we're doing the NPR voices already today. Oh, I, just, I, I actually listened to NPR today and they were discussing Dungeons and Dragons. And I thought to myself, this is the most NPR moment I have ever heard on NPR. And you are conversing or listening or watching to someone in a red shirt who has been featured on st louis npr multiple times so uh i was for the... i was on the boston npr once when i was at bu and uh because i got interviewed on the street about the win of the frozen four. Oh, i uh was interviewed at oh i probably was interviewed for the same boston uh victorious frozen four 2007 and I was interviewed by ESPN, and he asked me, "So, are uh, you big, you big college hockey guy?" And I'm like, "No, this is the first college hockey I've ever attended." Oh, all right, ah, uh, okay then. Thank you very much. And I don't think they used it, but uh, got a beer check. Going into the glacially musical podcast, pint glass, favorite beer of the show. Hopefully, friend of the show, uh, St. Louis STL IPA from Urban Chestnut Brewing, which is just down the road. And to get the pint glass in, here's the finger fudge down the middle. Keefe taught me this. You just pour it straight down. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, nailed it. And uh, you let it you let it ride, and it releases the gas. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but I have not been burpy on this show. Not too much in it's, some time. It doesn't look cool. I'm sure no bartenders will do this anywhere in the world, but bartender TikTok taught me this, and I agree. Also, it certainly makes for a much better drinkable beer. Gas in the air, not in your body. Beer in your body, not belching out and on and not you know i'm sure there are i know in many cultures belching is a sign of appreciation affection and taste but you know well the brewer's not here if he hears me burp because i drank it well he's not going to hear me burp because i drank it so it's it's not not good uh what do you got for us today i have not a new beer but a beer i've had before but my very last can of this particular beer i have many deftones beers in the closet in the fridge but this is Deptones Ceremony Hazy IPA by Belching Beaver. I do not love the hazies, but this is probably the best or second best of all the Deptones beers. And so this is my last one of these, unless I buy more. I am actually growing. Oh, I'm sorry. I talked over the pop. Damn it. Damn this it, is, Nick. Bad Nick. You, you wouldn't hear it anyway. These microphones do not pick up the pop. While I finger fudge pour, you speak. I actually heard the pop that time. It sounded like a wet fart. But... I have grown to appreciate the hazy being as half of the IPA section is now hazy IPAs. It's like, all right, well, what am I going to do? Drink Budweiser? Although Yingling is coming to town and you can pre-order Yingling in St. Louis now. Yingling and is the shit. I used to drink it a lot in New York. Whenever we go on a road trip, I come back with a couple cases. Yeah. At so. one point, they were the sponsor of the Boston Bruins. And Sam Adams was like, hold my beer. Actually, not literally. And they were like, no, fuck no. You're going to be sponsored by us. We're the Boston Beer Company. The Boston Beer Company. Nothing like uh, Sam Adams 
seasonal pumpkin ale. I know pumpkin is like, you know, pumpkin spice, basic bitch, everything, but like the pumpkin beer is truly delicious and well brewed and absolutely right on the head. Cheers to you. I'm going to drink from the can. Cheers. Same. Mm. I will say this and we'll move on to the vinyl check. What is not known but to very many people is that St. Sorry, excuse me. Sam Adams Boston Lager is actually a beer originally brewed in St. Louis in the 1800s. It was at one time called St. Louis Lager and the owner of the company or the original owner, whatever, he found his great grandfather's beer recipe. St. Louis has always been a beer city. And we, before Prohibition, we had 80 different breweries and we are now well past that. I actually stopped paying attention because there's too many. Uh, if you, would you like to vinyl check this week? I have a vinyl check. Do you want to go first? You always I, go first. I'll go first. First off, I am going to unfortunately traumatize anyone watching. It's the it's the puppet penis. Jane's addiction, ritual de lo habitual, whatever. I don't know how they want me to pronounce it. It is a repress on. I don't know what color that is. It is semen cool color. I think it's a, it's semen colored for. Oh, you, know, you just for you Jane. made this you made this even weirder. I mean, than it's, it already was. But is that not the appropriate color for that album? God, it. It's a very sexual album. It is, it, and I mean, I know a is, lot of people's first times were to that record oh in God. our generation. Oh God, I uh, we're sitting on the couch, me and the kid, listening to music about a week and a half ago, and she points over at the 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 new shelf, and she's like, "Dad, do you have a?" a a new arrivals pile are going on or I'm like, yeah, I got to keep those there till they get vinyl checked. She's like, you are ridiculous. You know, she's now repeating what the wife says. She points to the red jacket, the very, very red jacket. She goes, dad, is that the one with the cover? I'm like the puppet privates. She's like, yeah, dad, the puppet privates. I'm like, you should see nothing shocking. And then I tell her what it is. And, and we pull it up on the internet and she goes, dad, I should not have seen that. I told my wife that story because I thought it was hysterical. And she looks at me and goes, no, the kid was right. She should not have seen that. Well, crap. I Okay, well, I did what I did. So, I, I mean, like my segue in comparison now seems less horrible than your story following the segue. But I, um, yeah, my heart goes out to that child. Anyway, scarred for life. Um, well, I have another one. Oh, good. That is a great record. Like objectively... I don't love, I don't love Jane's, but that is a fantastic record. I love that one, and I love Nothing Shocking, and I'll get a copy of that. But here we got uh, the second album by Backstreet Crawler. Backstreet Crawler was a blues rock band started by Paul Kossoff of Free, and the first album was just Paul was Backstreet Crawler by Paul Kossoff, and it was frankly uh, a dumpster fire. The first track is 18 minutes of rando noodles. This one actually has songs and they wrote it before they got there. So it's actually quite a good record. Got that at the antique mall for eight bucks, $8, eight to $10 is now my range for, I'm just going to pick it up. If I think there's a possibility because it costs five to $7 just to mail something. That is. And Jane's I picked up. Where did I get that? And how much was it? I want to say I paid about 25. 25 for James? I, I would pay 25 for that record. Not a not a frightening amount, not a uh, neither neither great nor terrible. Right in the middle. Very good, very good. I um Yeah, that's 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 a pretty good that's a, that's a pretty good price. Uh I have a my vinyl check one today. And a record that I have talked about in a previous episode of wanting to have, and now I have it. Record Store Day, After the Fact, Kitty, Vinyl, Oracle, which was actually possibly their best record. I know it's not their most popular, but musically speaking, it is possibly their finest hour as, an, as a band. Um, Phenomenal, phenomenal tracks. Oracle, the title track, Mouthful of Poison in Winter, Severed, Pain, Wolves, What I Always Wanted, which was the single. And this is, uh, as it was a record store day. Oh, it's got a download code. Very good. I like seeing that on the floor. It's got a cool insert. 
with the font from the album and a collage and uh, some information. And then let's oh, I should have part. mentioned that the James doesn't even have an insert, I don't believe. Oh, tragic. But it's No, it has an insert. Another... Uh, Nothing to talk about, though. Unfortunately, came in the paper, so that's got to go. James gonna, came in the Mylar. This lovely candy apple red, fire engine red, oracle red kitty vinyl. So again... Very nice. Way like, better than uh, the stained... The 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 oh, the devil stain that I got over here. Oh, <laughs> I mean it again. It is. I like when the color kind of matches the vibe of the album. I you know it's creepy and gross, but um, I want to shout out um, a band you bring up all the time that I'm still not that familiar with, which was Le Left Lane Cruiser. Right, is a band yeah. you're a fan a fan of? Yes, love them. They they love are headlining that. a show in the Midwest soon, and opening for them is my homies. 20 watt tombstone oh so you I, should go I, to that well if you I mean, like I, 20 watt you'll love i, can't, I cannot i cannot get to chicago wisconsin or indiana oh. but man um, it sucks i just for the record i don't know if anybody's noticed but i am having a little bit of lag issues from time to time i get about a five second lag so if i sound dumb i'm not drunk yet me too and i'm always drunk and dumb um so that's the vinyl check. Do we shirt check and news check or news yeah. check and shirt check? Uh, shirt check. I just got a rando shirt from Austin Jukebox concert series. For Secret Records back when we had a uh, working reviewing relationship. All righty. I think most of that was dropped out by the lag. Do you ah, want to go, go again? Rando t-shirt, Austin Jukebox. It, uh, Rando uh, show some series of local artists and whatnot. Very cool. Got a cool ear on it. It does have a cool ear on it. Look at that. Um, let's see. I am just wearing one of my cool yellow Haunt shirts. Haunt, the heavy metal, thrash metal band from Fresno, California. California, eh? And I'm gonna I, try to get some more. Sh I'm probably gonna. I'm gonna try. I'm actively trying to buy more shirts because now that we do this on video and we shirt check, I look like a dingus wearing almost always wearing the same shirts. Dude, I rotate the same like eight to ten shirts for like two months. I shelve them. I rotate another eight to ten shirts. I wear those shirts every few days till they're dirty. I wash them. Uh, the nice ones are the ones I want to keep pristine. I wear once and I hang up in the closet but like i recycle my shirts i don't have enough well i have like, night. this is one of my rare non-black shirts let's appreciate <laughs> that we happen to both be not wearing a black shirt yeah that's a nobody had that on their bingo card tomorrow for tomorrow is the kiddo's 12th birthday and my present to her is we are going to go down to joe's records and she can buy any record she wants maybe i'll pick up a shirt while i'm there i'm planning on picking up obituary cause of death live infection it was there last time i was there hoping it's there tomorrow interesting i wonder what the uh i know that st louis is a, a, an actual big metal town so i imagine some some hipsters out there are buying those vinyls hopefully not they, the, one you want. the thing about uh the thing about joe's stl is they are really heavy on the new stuff which makes crate digging a little unfun because it's not exciting so, but there were like four or five copies of it. That's where I got the Slayer Seasons in the Abyss record that I bought a couple of months ago. They still had some when I was there last time, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So I imagine it'll still be there. But uh, let us get to the news of the day. You told me what you wanted to drop. I am just going to let you go in order to get the same treatment for when my news comes up. I will finish it off. So you think. Um Good news and then bad news, or good news and then unpleasant news? How do you want to do it? Start off with the bad, because I'm going to end with the fun. All right, then. Um, the 800-pound gorilla in the room, every time we have to talk about this, uh, Pantera dropped from Rock Am Ring and Rock Im Park, two of the biggest metal festivals in Germany, of the many metal festivals that take place in Germany yearly. Uh, apparently between sponsors, other bands on the bill, I can guess a couple who 
the promoters themselves regretting booking them in the first place. Pantera was dropped after a lot of intense discussions, air quotes, finger quotes, mostly due to Philip and some most past racist remarks, actions, et cetera. I hear a lot of stuff that Dimebag is also racist. I really, I understand about the Confederate flag guitar being racist, but I don't think Dimebag personally was racist. I met him on a, on a couple of occasions and Vinny. Um, Rex I, has atoned for his past racist words and, and behaviors, even personally to people that I know that he hurt when he was confronted about it. Philip, you know, not going to make apologies. He's got a litany of racist incidents, speeches. He wore a Nazi shirt on MTV once while being interviewed. I think it was a joke to him. It's not a joke. We cannot, you know, we give a pass to some people. We don't give a pass to others. Um, I don't, know if, I don't know if this affects the rest of their tour. And when I say we give a pass, I mean all of right. No, the, I know the I know. media, the fans, people have chosen to give Philip a pass. I will say the incident was seven years ago, the white power incident at Dime Bash. Uh, he did apologize, whether it was weak or not. He did apologize multiple times, and it, it's a long time since he's done anything sketchy or questionable and kept a very low profile, except Pantera shows. So. If I could, I'm going to jump in on this one thing and make a complete and absolute liar out of myself. I will. Be, I choose to believe, maybe it's hope, maybe maybe it's not, that for Diamond Vinny, the Confederate flag really was the Southern pride thing that has been tried to, that people have tried to sell to us over the years. There is a great book called What Are You Doing Here? Which is a biography of a young black woman getting into the world of heavy metal and she ended up ingratiating herself in ways that I've never been able to do. And she talked about Dimebag Daryl. This is long after he died. So she would be able to say whatever she wanted without reprisal, but she spoke very highly of him talked about how, yes, there's a Confederate flag on his guitar, but whenever he saw me, he said, come over here, do a shot with me. Well, yeah, I don't I think, know. I think I that's, know. I think you're thinking of Philip who she has a, had a friendship with. Uh, that's Lena Dawes. First of all, the Thank author. You. And I have called What Are You Doing Here the most important book ever written about metal because it confronts, the, confronts the ugly truth. Metal, all, all of human life, but metal also as a subgenre is full of racists, homophobes, gatekeepers, domestic violence, you know, doers. I don't know. I'm learning how to add, you know. There are a but, lot of people who for them the music is not as much a fantasy as it is a soundtrack to what's going on inside their head and outside their fists and it is important to treat them like Naboo from the Mighty Boosh and we must turn our backs on them and do our best but we as two people are not going to clean up metal today but we are going to clean up metal every day so move on to track two of the news if you're ready I'm not ready Oh, uh, just, just just one more minute about this. I'm not apologizing for Philip or Pantera. As a news outlet person, you have to cover what's news. I don't want to write about Marilyn Manson one more day. But every time I make a post about the current Manson dealings, it gets a lot of clicks and brings a lot of attention to other stories I want to promote. So it's a bugaboo for the journalists. I did see several metal journalists decrying Pantera and Philip, but yet they continue to post stories about them, as do we. So I'm not apologizing for them. We'll be interested to see if they are removed from other festivals that also have an anti-fascist, anti-racist stance. Be interesting to see Metallica promoted their album release today with a big thing. No mention of Pantera, nothing. I wonder if they're going to react at all. It probably won't. Um, I would imagine it, you know, for Metallica, what they're going to do is let it blow because the tour isn't for eight months. It'll well, I mean, go, the tour in Europe is in six weeks or eight weeks. Is like, Pantera on that tour? They may not be, but I mean, like it's invariable. They're going to get asked questions about Pantera. Well, fair enough. That is true. Well, I would imagine that they're probably going to let that one go. I, they, if I were a journalist interviewing Metallica at a press conference or on the radio, I don't think I would be shooting my shot on Pantera. But that's just me. I am sure someone will. Yeah, we'll see what happens if uh, the opportunity arises. I have said re repeatedly, if I'm ever going to get a chance to interview Metallica, it's now with this new album. 
and and probably not again. We'll see. My hopes are low. Uh, moving on, finally to the to some good news. But I just felt like we had to put the Pantera story out there. It's we talk about them. We talked about them a lot. We have got to talk about the good and the bad. News is the news. It is there. We have no no bent. We report. So um, coming up in just six weeks. It's the 50th anniversary of the release of Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, arguably the greatest record of all time, perhaps. Inarguably. Well, arguably. And Inarguably. certainly the best recorded album of all time. Um, so, so they are releasing a deluxe vinyl box set of the album. The hype is legit. It is many hundreds of dollars to buy this. And I wish I had many hundreds of dollars to buy it. <laughs> A big know, number. I have the original on vinyl on a 180 gram repress from 20 whatever year. I don't need a, a box set of this, but I do love the album. I used to give Dark Side of the Moon away. I used to like buy a row of CDs from the store, just literally go buy a row of CDs and just give them out as gifts to friends who didn't know the album. Um, and here's the fun part or the not so fun part to celebrate the 50. And the announcement and the pre-order of the vinyl set, they released a new logo, a Dark Side Fifty logo with the with the pair with the prism, the multicolored prism inside the O of the fifty, and fans thought this was some LGBTQ plus stance, not the not associating the prism with Pink Floyd, but thinking it was the Pride flag, which it kind of is. And why shouldn't it be? And Pink Floyd has never been nothing but inclusive to everyone. Um, even arguably in the wall, when there's some offensive language, it's meant to be in character about the people who should be offending you. And it's not, meant to be offensive. It's meant to be offensive because it's a characterization. It's not offensive to be offensive to people. Pink Floyd has been nothing but one of the most inclusive bands ever. And just their fan base just went ape shit on social media about this prism, rainbow flag, gay, Pink Floyd is turning gay. Why is Pink Floyd woke? Get this wokeness out of my Pink Floyd. You libtard Pink Floyds. Holy shit, the stupid is strong with the human race. Nick. It's almost like they've never heard Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, Animals, The Wall, or The Final Cut. So my question to those people is, what Pink Floyd are you listening to? clearly not what i'm listening to i don't understand um one is reminded of paul ryan the former leader of the conservative oh. party in america who said his favorite band is rage against the machine and he was deep at, like, cut oh, deep paul, cuts paul you're like they're you're the machine they're raging against literally you and the tea and party and tom and morello this and tom morello's a super super commie tom morello California, Tom Morello, my hero, one of my heroes. Um, and Paul was like, well, I don't really listen to the words. I just like the riffs and the fuck you. I won't do what you tell me. This guy has no self-awareness. But anyway, awesome. Yes. Uh, but yeah, one. Pink Floyd fans, get your heads out of your collective arses. I mean, and I always wonder the people that are like looking at this going, oh, woke, woke, libtard, leftist, whatever. Are they listening to. When you dig the hole, don't sit down. It's time to dig another one. Are they hearing that and going, oh, my God, that's awful? Or are they going, that's right, bitch, dig that next one? I don't know. They, Roger would not be a friend to them. We've already done a lot of Roger this week on the Department of Mental Antiquities, which is streaming now live everywhere you can hear podcasts between Nick and his co-host, Duncan, and myself as a guest. Um, Just going to point out, cup. Cup. Glass, not cup. Glass. Pint glass. Um, yeah. So... Pink Floyd news, not bad, not good, weird. Uh, do I have a third news thing? I don't remember what it was. Metallica, so I I... Screaming Suicide. Uh, did Metallica, Screaming Suicide, new song. Um, very heavy metal. Uh, some people like it more than the first one. I think I like Lux Eterna slightly a little more, but I love the, again, the new album vibes. This is 60-year-old Metallica. This is what I want from Metallica. This is the Metallica I was expecting. I'm not expecting them to pull out Injustice for All 2 and do 14-minute progressive metal songs that would test their limits as human beings. I'm expecting them to do what's comfortable, and I'm okay with that. And the songs are strong, and I'm not, and the lyrics are incredible, and I want to just, this is very important to point out. I am getting, I'm getting load and reload vibes. 
some record. some load and reload, but I'm really I feel like they're just in kill them all brain. No, no, no. Kill I mean, I, I I should explain that, and I don't mean that it sounds just like load. It's got that deep purple, thin Lizzie turn of the turn of the eighties kind of. Sure, it's, it's like that plus new album, which is what I think. Yeah, if they had their druthers to go back and do over, is what load and reload would have been. Could be. I I just want to say that the screaming suicide topic and lyrics and story is really grabbing people. And James Hetfield, who has been oddly oddly public lately, uh, first of all, he had to take to social media to say he's not on any social media. And any social media messages from him come only from the Metallica channels. And people are out there getting duped by false accounts and this no i think somebody like i said somebody was using the metallica a metal a similar metallica style of channels to promote nfts and things they would never do i think and then but james used the metallica platform and he put out a message about suicide and about suicidal ideation and thoughts and that we shouldn't sweep this under the rug and clearly he struggled with this himself which is a revelation i think we know he's had many problems with drugs and alcohol. This is, you know, he's talked about mental health and insecurity and all these things publicly and even on stage. But now he's using his platform to reach out to people who have had issues surrounding suicidal thoughts. And I think that's extremely powerful. And what I want from late Metallica right now is for them to use their platform for as much good as possible, which they seem to be doing. So I am uh, or not. I'm so, really liking Grandpa James. Yeah, he's turned out all right. All righty. If you don't mind. I'm all done. I'm going to waste everybody's time now. As everyone knows, I am oddly fascinated and horribly repulsed by Vinnie Vincent and the Vinnie Vincent camp. So I am going. uh, You know what? I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to give you the. the, uh, I'm I'm going to chop this down a bit. It's about as long as Roger Waters uh, animals notes. Vinnie Vincent has about 15 albums in the works. Be patient because getting out albums is hard. So it was going to take possibly two years to get the first one out. I don't know if Vinnie Vincent. Did you say 15? Uh, here, well, you're me exaggerating. Just... One, two, three, four, just, oh, wait, five. Five albums coming out. He's got them planned. They're in the works. Uh, Vinnie Vincent Invasion, Judgment Day, Guitar Mageddon Part 1, Judgment Day, Guitar Mageddon Part 2, Vinnie Vincent LP, Maybe It's the Rain, Uh, Vinnie Vincent uh, New Single, Sophia, Details Coming Soon. Feels like we could have already just done that. There's all these wonderful channels that you can use. I've heard of this one on the internet. It's like me pipe or something. Uh, something to do some pronoun and some cylindrical object. It's very surfy. Uh, then we've also got Vinnie Vincent, a million to one. And uh, there's also a Vinnie Vincent invasion live tour coming. And a Vinnie Vincent plays the blues LP. <laughs> Uh, it's going to take a very long time as he has no idea how to navigate the world. Now, I mean, I could, if I had, the first album is mastered and done and ready, but it could take up to twenty end of 2024 to it see the light of day or to have any singles released off of it. Uh, if you have a single coming out, you should not be releasing details about said single. You should be releasing said single. This is free career advice for anyone who wants to be a musician. I'm going to quote Weird Science, a.k.a. the drummer from Coheed and Cambria, whose name I forget, when he was on the song How to Be, uh, How to be, an, indie, How to be an Indie Rapper with MC Lars off the Lars Attacks 2007, sorry, 2011 record. Is that Chris Penny? I don't remember. The original it's, it's, Coheed The original drummer. drummer. He was fired. Or Josh. Yeah, Josh, Josh something. Eppard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or the, I like to think of him weird science. Uh, you've got to, you've got to re- keep, you got to release material until it goes viral, like venereal. 
However, mm. what Vinnie Vincent does is he promises material and it never ever ever happens. What is the over under on these five or six records in a tour happening? I'm going to say two of the six things happen. Two. Which is really generous. Okay, the enthusiasm count is going to hit one now. Jesus fucking Christ. No. None. None. The uh, one guy um, who's a Vinnie Vincent apologist, Vinnie Vincent Stan on the Kiss Forum says, I'm really disappointed that he's not releasing these on CDs uh, because vinyl is a niche market and most people don't even own turntables, blah, blah, blah. That my is response true. is, my response is, dude, don't worry. You're going to have just as much chance to enjoy this on CD as vinyl. <laughs> Zero. Um, right. I was going to, yeah, because I'm clever. I just want to say, I don't want to supersede your final point. I will let you say one last thing. We we did a a little thing on um the success of vinyl and there's been some people now backpedaling on that those statistics but one thing that did come out is that almost half of the people who buy vinyl don't yet own a turntable so it's building collectors who aren't playing the records here's what I can tell you about vinyl and this and that it is back to stay whether it's Funko Pops like behind me or whether it's records like right also behind me, whether people are playing them or just whatever, I don't care as long as they keep making them so I can get them. But what I am seeing more routinely is people of a certain age, Gen Xers, I'm seeing a lot of Gen X, my Gen X friends on Facebook switching to vinyl. And people that I never saw posting pictures of records before are now posting pictures of records. And I'm here for that. If you, a, a good friend of mine, my good friend Steve, asked me about, he wanted my opinion on which turntable to buy, where to go, and all that kind of stuff. And anybody in St. Louis who listens to this who knows me, or even doesn't know me, get with me in the comments with an email. And I will show you the best places in this city to go buy records. And I can take you to the places to go buy a turntable. It's we we will probably need to do a chaser on just turntables and gear again, even though we did an early one together on your gear. Mm -hmm. Um, and with that agreed, out of the agreed. way, I think we have done all the checks and we're ready for the meat. All righty, we have appetized. Just uh, in case I'd forget to say it, got a Green Dragon Double IPA in reserve because I've had a fucking day. Mm. Uh, but we are here to talk about the third record in the Exodus saga, probably their biggest, most famous record of the original run. I can remember in 1989, 1990, my good friend Tom Ward, when I went to go visit him after he had moved, this is the same person that introduced me to Easy e the year previous now introduces me to anthrax caught in a mosh introduces me to guar introduces me to toxic toxic waltz by exodus and this is where i got on the train and i got on the train late to the point where i didn't realize that zetro was not the original many people so. you're not alone uh I want to say that the, so we where we left off with EXO is uh, Z Zetro comes in, they make the second record, Pleasures of the Flesh. It's an adjustment period. Hot. Sorry, Pleasures of the Flesh. Hot. Mm. They it's an adjustment period. <laughs> they they tore a little bit more on that record than the previous one, but not much. Um, so still haven't really gotten, they've toured the world a little bit now, but they still haven't really broken through despite their credibility, reputation and respect all around. So they are legitimately, if there was a big four back then, Exodus definitely is five, right? Like back then for sure. Um, yeah, uh, Testament hasn't, um, Testament, Testament hasn't has broken not, yet. Not really happened yet. Overkill is happening, but they're not big yet. God, I feel like Overkill really, even in the upper echelon of metal, didn't really. Well, we can get we through. should do we should definitely do an Overkill run. The problem is there's so many albums. Where do you start? Where do you begin? Uh, you could literally do three different runs of Exodus albums: '80s, '90s, and aughts. 
and X and, and Overkill has a new record coming out soon. So I'm very excited. We think we're gonna get the first single this week. So we'll be on the ear ear listen out for that. But uh they go back in to make the third record and they've had a whole record and, and a tour with Zetro to really get to know him and really make him part of the writing team. And so Fabulous Disaster is is crafted and they are, you know, ready to get it out. Again, another release on combat relativity although i think at this point combat was bought and so they did get distrib- major label distribution they were on the original headbangers ball tour this is a thing in the late 80s even though headbangers ball has only been around for a year or two they toured europe uh after the record came out i guess we'll get to that in a bit but yeah they really um they just did a few tours to support these first few records. And, you know, they really put it together on this one in a lot of ways. Uh, I know there's definitely some pitfalls for you on this record, but, you know, they definitely came on strong. I do want to say before we do the track by track or any other discussion, if you have any other points to make, I weirdly, I love um, much more than Spotify. I really love the 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 platform of YouTube music, which I highly recommend, especially I already have the pro for YouTube premium for video. So I can skip, comer- I don't get commercials a lot as much as everyone else. And the same thing with YouTube music, it's kind of like Spotify premium. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. unlimited, versatile, all these things. And the platform is much more stable and better as an app on my phone than Spotify. But the mix on YouTube music is bad. And I wonder if Spotify has the remastered version and doesn't say it does because it like almost it seems like oddly over 80s, like super lo-fi over phasey, mm-hmm. like literally complete lack of quality all the way through the YouTube music version. I can't tell you. I was listening to my CD rip through iTunes. Very good. Very good. So I love that's... I love iTunes so much for a long time. And I do have my... Uh, 2009 ipod here somewhere uh i I have a i have an iphone my family i am i live in a family of apple people i am not an apple person i am a pc person and i'm just at the point where i have used pc for so long i just don't want to learn a new system i mean there's no reason for me to I, i don't need it your wife is definitely a mac and you're a pc for sure oh yeah oh yeah and and I'm fine with that. My kid's got a Mac. She's got a Mac. I I I rock the PC. We have iPhones because her dad wanted an iPhone because her brother had iPhones and everybody's got. And people are like, oh, so you're an Apple person? No. Well, why do you have an iPhone? Because my father-in-law gave it to me. Shout out and... to uh, Epic Rap Battles of History for Bill Gates versus Steve Jobs. Anybody anyway. want to talk to a scammer live on the air? No. No. Okay, because they're calling me. You can, anyway, you can turn, so, you can turn your ringer off. That would be useful. My ringer is off. That was Why vibrate. It, it's, you turn your vibrate. You off. I don't know, I don't know right. how to do that. Silence. I'll put it over here. So Silence is golden. Duct tape it is won't silver. happen again. I'm sorry. That's fine. Anywho, where were we? Fabulous Disaster, 89. And let's just say for a second, what other records came out in 89? Or, you know, like it's a weird year. Like the whole big four doesn't have a record this year. Cowboys from Hell? 90. Is it 90? Yeah. Testament. Uh, practice what, Legacy? What you preach. Oh. Practice What You uh, Preach. Um, God, nope. 89? Uh, Sepultura. Kiss, Hot in the Shade. Oh. <laughs> Sepultura. Arise. Sounds right, because... Or uh, Beneath the Remains. Chaos AD things. was 92, 93. Yeah, yeah. I think and Arise Roots was... 95. Six. I think... Six? I, yeah, early six. I think it's... um, Yeah, there's not a lot that year. I, uh, Forbidden has a record that year. Sacred Reich has a record that Twisted year. Twisted into Sarah. form? I love, to, I love Forbidden, dude. You have That's no the idea. one I have. We might need to do a run. I have both. The big I got ones. For, I got Forbidden over there. Yeah. Um... um so River yeah, this, Mortis? this album stands out. Rigor Mortis. There's this album stands out at this time. There was a lot, you know, death metal is becoming a big deal right now, especially the Floridian. Death Blessed metal is bands. the sick. Could be. Was 90, was, was, was 90 yeah. or was 89, I believe. Yeah. 
or maybe the first one uh, there's, alters the madness. There's there's a lot of big um I think it's 88. There's a lot of big cannibal corpse. There's death metal, but the thrash metal not so much. This is where thrash metal one of the great things about underground movements is by the time they hit the mainstream is when they're over. And at this point in times when death metal is becoming the 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 nouveau the, the nouveau movement in metal. And ironically, this is the exact same time where Metallica musically, I think we could all agree, is peaking, and they are on the precipice of commercial peaking. Fair so enough. Um, well, they're about to go into the studio. We just, they're going to the studio we, six months after this. We just passed the anniversary of the debut appearance of the one video, just in the calendar year. Uh, that is last... a meaningless anniversary. That's like hot dog day in July. All right. I'm sorry. You should be. Um, I made a good point. You shit on me. I... <laughs> yeah. uh, anywho, so let's find out. Let's. Are we ready to do the track by track? Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get into that because I the uh, not a whole lot of really good tour information that we can really get into. Not until after, yeah. I think it's interesting to note that Gary has really taken over the whole shebang of Exodus. I think, especially after the departure of Paul, until later on in their career, it's a much less collaborative effort, and it's yeah, it's really it, Gary's baby again. The only song on this album musically. Not written by Gary is the cover. Well, uh, of course. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the album opens with the last act of Defiance, a certified banger, one of the best Exodus songs ever, surely in the top 15 ever of their songs, and is, uh, I don't know if you know this, was based on the infamous New Mexico State Penitentiary Riot of 1980, arguably the most violent riot in prison history. And I think they controlled the prison for something uh, like three straight days, a, a day and a half, like two and two days plus. They controlled the prison until the guards and police took it back. Holy balls. And uh, 12 officers were taken hostage and killed. Oof. There were murders and rapes, beatings. Shocking. Uh, and then, yeah, it, it was pretty terrible. Um, no, I, I did not know that. I love this one. It starts off with a really wonderful thing. There have been a lot of, and I'm going to tie this into the modern world, if you don't mind. There has been a lot of talk about the death penalty lately. And there's a great article on NPR that I read today that, that the ACLU forwarded today. There are four executions from Virginia. Yeah, where they have the audio tapes of them and it's horrifying truly horrifying and so we are beginning to peel peer behind the veil of a lot of this stuff and i am a very strong opponent of rehabilitation i'm a very strong opponent of uh, accountability for one's actions but the way this is described it just makes the whole thing Icky. I think really you meant to say icky. I think you meant to say proponent, not opponent. I, oh, I'm sorry. No, holy shit. Yes. Jesus Christ. Oh I'm an opponent of rehabilitation. Doesn't quite sound like you, my friend. No, um, no, I'm a complete proponent of uh, yeah, rehabilitation. Yeah. I when I worked in an industry doing mail order for inmates that was placed by their families, not the inmates, I would tell people who were I mean, I was kind of a counselor. And there was a lady that I spoke to in Spanish frequently. And I, I, I love that woman. I hope she's okay. But the, I remember telling people, you know, this is, they would say, they would cry and they would say, you know, this is the first time in prison. And the things I would always say is, this is an opportunity for him to change. Tell him to avail himself of the opportunities that are available to him in prison. So yes, proponent of rehabilitation. Yeah, my, my first job in social media was for a nonprofit focused on restorative justice. And in addition to social media and digital marketing, I also helped run the office and do a lot of intake. And we would get calls from prisons all over the country that would say, yeah, oh, we, I... we, we realize we don't have any programs for the inmates and we've had a rash of suicides and guard murders. We were wondering what we could do about that. Yeah, I... Uh... 
you know, I, I come from, you know, an LEO family. I will not elaborate. I am very active in pol LEO, polit LEO politics in the city because I want it to be the right way, not the wrong way. I want it to be the smart way. But, you know, yes, if you fuck up, you need to pay for that. And yeah, of course, it's a, the, the, it's a penal system for a reason. But I think the Quaker notion of the penal system versus what we really need to do today, if you just. Hey, the Reagan administration people. changed it. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's, it went from it for went profit. From... Yeah, for profit prisons oh. are a horrible idea. Um, yeah, but correct. anyway, let's not it, squirrel too much. Needless right, to say, will, the, the song is a banger. Yes. Prisoners' rights now. Restore prisoners' voting rights now if you have not done a violent crime. Awesome. Realistically, anybody that hasn't done a violent crime, you pretty much should be free. Anyway. I completely agree. And I so, But That's I will I like say you. that dog yeah. that killed a man in Kansas with a gun this week should not be able to vote. Okay. Um, the title I had to get that in this week. I'm sorry. The title track is Next Fabulous Disaster. It's a thrasher piece. I really like it. I had a mouthful of beer when Keefe dropped the word thrasher piece for the first time on this. I'm not podcast. really. I'm not really watching you. I'm looking at the track listing on another screen, and I'm just smiling for the camera. But I'm absolutely not seeing you right now. So if you want to give me the finger. Uh, that's fine, but I'm gonna like, give you the, no. I'm gonna give, give you the Spock. Look, look at me now. You looking? I'm not. I have to change screens. Okay. I'm not that's good at it. That's highly unusual, Captain. Yes, I'm giving you the Spock. Fabulous and, disaster. It, another absolute banger of a track. This record so far has surpassed its two predecessors. This is. I will die on this hill. Maybe not the first one. Definitely the last one. The last one was a departure project where they didn't know where they were going. And, you know, they're letting Zetro write his lyrics. They're letting Zetro write his vocals. It is similar to, 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 to Bailoff, but it is not an aping. It is halfway between Bailoff and Joy Belladonna, which is a great place to be, in my opinion. Joy Belladonna is too, wah, too much Bruce Dickinson there. Tom or I started that way, quickly walked it back. Uh, yeah, so digging this record so far. I think what's interesting about Zetro, and I'm glad you brought that up because that was a point I was going to make in a song or two, but we'll make it now. Like I said, Zetro is much more musical than he lets on. So even though he's also still shouting in key because that's what the music calls for, that's what the style of the band asks for following the standard that Paul set, Zetro can sing some of those lines or be a little more melodic even when he's being harsh and almost hardcore. And that's something that's not done well or much by other people in the genre. Agreed. And honestly, the vocals are a big part of why I'm not the biggest thrash fan in the world. I like the big four, five, six, maybe eight, except for Anthrax, because two... It's because of Joey Belladonna. That that's it. It's just because of him. And that's only half their career. I have, or, I or realized a more than a, half. Sixty five percent. May I? You may. I realized recently that I need to revisit the John Bush era because I never gave that a true opportunity. I do love uh, Attack of the Killer Bees, but I'll leave it at that. More thrash bands than not. Follow the Joey Belladonna vocal stylings, not the Metallica Slayer Megadeth vocals. Well, nobody followed Megadeth because nobody can do that. But there are bands that do imitate Dave. They shouldn't, but they do. Why? I don't know. He's there's, iconic. There's, there's so that, many other better word. vocalists to steal from. There's but that word again. Stop that word. Stop that word. But yeah, anyway, I, I like that. In my mind, I remembered this record as being very much on the Joey Belladonna scale. So revisiting it this week, it's nice that it's not. It, mm. it's, it, it borders on, it kind of throws rocks at, but it doesn't, it doesn't get there. Okay. Let's talk about arguably the best song Exodus has ever made. Everybody's doing the toxic waltz. Is it though? Is it though? It is their master of puppets. It is their reigning blood. 
It is their Among the Living. It is their Peace Sells But Who's Buying. It is their best song. Or in their top three, 1A, 1B, 1C, top three songs, if not their best song. It is certainly their best known song because the video yes, agree was that. on regular rotation, not just at Bangers Ball, on regular MTV. It was so popular because it is about metal and being a metal fan and about metal shows. They have many so songs like this. This is their second in three albums. That is a metalhead anthem. This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Her name is Charlene. <laughs> Private sir, Charlene, pile. sir! Private Pile, what are you doing in my head at two in the morning? Holding my gun, sir! Did your mommy and daddy not love you enough? No. What is your major malfunction, numbness? Did mommy and daddy not give you enough attention? Now put that gun down! Sorry. Rest in we rest in power, Arlie Ermy. Did you know that he uh, was not cast in that role? No, he was the military consultant on the film. Yeah, he snaked his way in. He uh, he went straight up Hollywood and took the other guy down. I love that. He love became that. a fantastic actor, though, not just that guy. Uh, Completely actually, Completely agree. His his best acting by far is in the movie Seven. Um, he was in Seven. He's the police chief in Seven. Not the police commissioner, but like the, the head of the, right. the boss of the two officers. There's a scene when he picks up a ringing phone and goes, this is not even my desk and hangs it back up. <laughs> I think it was I think it was ad libbed. Because Fincher loves that. But anyway, I, uh, I, I mean, I've only I haven't seen seven in many years because of my Brad Pitt situation. I watch seven every two to three weeks, multiple times. Well, take, uh, that says a lot more about you than you really take want to say. vociferous notes. Uh, and um, anyway, do you razor blade your, your do you razor blade your your fingerprints off while you're doing I, it? That's where I draw the line. But oh, well, I'm glad, okay. Well, toxic uh, walls. Toxic walls. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, one of the things that I have run into in the the podcast with Duncan is we routinely run into songs about metal, and songs about metal and Metallica's done. What ten of them? I mean, I've heard "Kill 'Em All." "Kill 'Em All" is basically "We're Metal." That's like the whole thing, and it, that's fine when you're eighteen or nineteen. It just it gets a little tiresome. But I would not say this is their master of puppets. Uh, I would say it's their reigning blood. I would say it's their sweating bullets. I would Maybe say it's their seek and destroy at least. No, like, no, no. Yes, I would say it's their Enter Sandman. They're most well known, but not necessarily their best. Okay, good. Love, is it a fun song? It's, yes, it's is a it fantastic much, song. Is it as much fun now that I'm 47 and not 13? 14. No, the song also uses the word munch as a pejorative, which is where I think butt munch comes from in the popular lexicon before Beavis and Butthead. I'm just saying, I think it's important to mention. All right, I got an, I Now we come to the part of the record that punches you in the junk. And not in the best way. Uh, so There's no good way. For many years, I loved this cover of Low Rider by War because I thought it was quirky and fun. And other than Anthrax, there hadn't been a lot of covers in by the thrash leaders except Overkill that likes to do covers. And make them their own. And for a long time, I liked this cover. And I was like, it's fast. It's got like a little jaunty riff. And then it's like, I just listened to it back this week. And I, I was like, wow, this is not good at all. Like, it's not good anymore. Like, I think I like the novelty of it. I liked when I was younger. And now I was like, wow, they missed this way off the mark. I would make the point they were probably fans of Cheech and Chong. And Cheech and Chong uh, used basically the entirety of the song Lowrider in, I believe, Up in Smoke. Like in the, the opening sequence of Up in Smoke is like three of the four minutes of Lowrider. And as a young adult, as a teenager, that is indelible. However, it's kind of like, it would be like if Sepultura covered Lowrider. And it would be like if Metallica covered Wild Thing. It just they have not live. on not on a record, so it doesn't count. Technically, it's on Binge and Purge, no? 
I think no. it is. No. Yeah, it's, in, it's in one of the solos. Oh, that's different. I don't count that. All right. They they count them. Um <laughs> well, publishing counts it, yes. So yeah, like Zetro is not good on here. No, no, it's all bad. Because he can only be like in Zetro's defense, he can only do Zetro. You can't ask he like he could not do Paul, he had to do himself. So he could not do anything else. He had to do Zetro. And so he's doing Lowrider as Zetro. Uh, surely it's a weed reference. War is a huge band in the Bay Area, by the way. Uh, I think they're from Oakland. And or many of the members are from Oakland. So it's like a song you grow up with. It's California culture, this song. Horn's cover of Lowrider is phenomenal, by the way. I have it in my head now. Jesus you Christ. You're welcome. Not your fault. It's their fault. Yeah. Then, then the next song, I think we've said everything we can say about this not being good. The next song is a song Nick and I are split on. Cajun Hell is the first hint of Exodus is out of ideas with thrash metal because like the song is, it's not, it's not bad, but it's like, it's a little like they're tired and don't know what to do next. Um, I don't know the order these were written. I wonder if this was written last and stuck in the middle because it just feels that way to me. That being said, great riff. Once the song actually kicks in and happens, it is a great riff. I think the song itself is a bit weak. I've heard it three times this week and each time was painful. Mm. I am, I yield my time. <laughs> yeah, I yield my time. Perfect. Uh, back on track, although a long track, is like father, like son, which is a, 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 a you got to be patient with this one, but it is a good song. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know if I was lagging or not. No. Uh, I do not require eight minutes out of Exodus. That being said, <laughs> excuse me, this is a good song. I would argue they probably put it in the wrong place. Had they hidden, had they put this one track up and hidden low rider behind it. Probably would have been better for uh, continuity's sake. But yeah, another good track. I, I'm guessing that the album flips. I don't have this on vinyl. I'm guessing the album flips after Cajun Hell. Just looking at the... Yeah, that's probably times. right. The, the, the original tracking of this, not the CD tracking, which I listened to, which has an extra, which has a bonus, is 45 minutes. So we're looking at uh, eight... Uh, 14, 18, 21. Yeah, so it would flip right at Cage. It would flip after yeah, Cage. There, there's no way to have like six tracks on side one and three on two or four if you count the bonus. If you uh, could, but you'd have to do some major moving around. Which I've got enough. a record that did that actually. When they did a vinyl pressing of it, they, they moved it around to make it work. Okay. Uh, let's talk next about Corruption, arguably the second or third best song on the whole album. This song is killer. It's the right amount of, it's four minutes. It's thrashy. It kind of reminds me of Bonded by Blood. Phenomenal hick, ph uh, hook, excuse me, phenomenal rips. I tried to say hook and riffs at the same time, and I said hick. Apologies to all hicks, um, but not people who live in Hicksville, Long Island. And Corruption is just badass. It's one of my favorite Gary Holt riffs ever. What I like about this record is, you know, I, I mean, I just CD tracking wise, it's amazing. They they really nailed it because when you get to this, when you for me, the 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 second half of the first side is squiffy. But once you flip it or get past it, however you want to look at it, CD, record, cassette, whatever. Once you get past that, each track continually continually gets better. I think they peak probably with Fabulous Disaster. Great track. But on the, on the second side, it's a grower. And that's the way I want a record that makes me want to keep going. And I have, and I'm sure we all do, way too many where you got one great side. And it's like, you got to tracking sequencing matters in this this I is a used, great way of showing that i used to buy records based on if they had three good songs if a record had three good songs i was in for a penny in for a pound a lot of records Reasonable. don't even 
I think it's fair, especially back in the days before you could listen to a whole record before you bought it. So that helps you judge by the singles. That's or... how I chose Shovel Love today. I did 20 minutes of the 80. And I went, yeah. these are good 20 minutes. 15 yeah. bucks. Yeah, I guess. Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Chubba Love, copyright 1991, Curtis Dunlap. Anyway. Um, oh, no, no, no. We're going to stop defining that because everybody needs to know by now. Yeah, but I don't want to take the credit away from my friend who I <sighs> would not have known what it was if he didn't make it up. It's unfair. We can just say copy your friend's name. They just did. Okay. Verbal Razors is the next to last track. And again, the like, so, you know, sort of the hump of Cajun Hell, low rider, Cajun Hell, like father, like son. And then the bell, the bottom of the bell curve is just that, like a lot of badassery. Verbal Razors is just, just very sleek and really tight. And Zetro is very good on these last couple of songs, especially this one. Completely agree. Love the title. Love the riff. The solo, I believe it is this one. Don't quote me. But the solo in this one is just, there, there's a solo in this vicinity by, I assume, Mr. Holt. That is just this kind of epic Ace Fraley Black Diamond kind of solo. And yeah, we are we're we're ending strong. We're building, we're doing the good stuff. And then uh, similar to Corruption, another song they still play live, and I saw them play live in the last year is Open Season, which is a fantastic song. Shorter, better way to close the record than anything else. And uh again, these last Exodus closes records out strong. Three in a row, side B, almost better than side A, except on Bonded by Blood. And just very strong end to the record. I want to keep hearing a lot of these songs. I would still listen to like five of these nine songs on the regular if I could leave out Lowrider and K. Janelle. I believe the lag is over. Yes, I apologize for that. I Usually you were talking long enough over my lag. Uh, yes, the, another, I mean, a perfect ending track. They they do a great job on this one. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, my version then contained Overdose, which is an ACDC cover. I was about to talk about that. <laughs> I don't recognize this song. Well, again, Zetro... Uh, is Bon Scott reincarnated? That's who he wants. Yeah, to be. except this song is is just fuck awful. It, and you know it doesn't get better because they do it. It just it. It's like Hank Hill said in the episode where Bobby joined the Christian rock church. He says he says to the the, the preacher by adding Jesus to rock, you're not making Christianity better. You're just making rock and roll music worse. That's a fantastic quote. Um, wait till you hear them do Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap in a few years. Oh, no, I will not. Uh, I'm not you, no. you might have to. So following the drop of Fabulous Disaster, which is in uh, January of 89, recorded in late 88. So they didn't even really tour that much on the last record. I love uh, it when bands grind like this. Tour studio tour studio well it was i think a, a combination of sales and other things in the uk that in the uk this record came out on music for nations by the way um, not a, surprising that's where metallica was released for a number of years that's where megadeth right. was released that's where the all these guys were released yeah so they tour europe with nuclear assault and acid rain one is retired and acid rain is kind of back from retirement correct me yeah. if i'm wrong but nuclear assault was immortalized on garage inc our garage days we revisited. Am I wrong? You're wrong. Okay. Fair. Not at all. Nuclear Assaults from upstate New York. They are a thrash grind band and mm -hmm. they're, they're fantastic. They would be worth a set. Then they came back to North America and had Sick of It All, Faith or Fear, and For Forbidden and Dead Orchestra and Vermont all opening for them. Forbidden is Bay Area Homies, arguably one of my favorite bands ever. Not arguably, definitely one of my favorite bands ever. I never. Shut I up saw about them in '95. I love Forbidden. They're definitely fully retired forever, um, unfortunately. But they did a live album at the final show of the tour of the U.S. July 14th, 
at the Fillmore Ooh. um here in town. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think historically people do like this record. They still play some of these songs. And you know, again, when you do kind of like four five albums in six years, which is going to be the case next year in this band, you start to have some some wear. It's it's a lot like television, right? In America, when your television get when your series gets ordered, they order 20. <clears throat> and then if they like that, they order 80. And you get your pen. You got to start writing. And yeah. there's and when that happens, there is always a, a, a there's always a letdown. It's just it's it's too much. And <laughs> I was going to just ask you, having heard these three records now, and we've quickly gotten to three, it feels. It does. It really does. Them. We've really banged through these better than we normally do. I feel like this record, which is again produced by the trio of Gary, Rick Honolt, and Mark Senesak, who is kind of their de facto producer for the early part of their career. Low Rider is still in my head. Low Rider is bad, and Cajun Hell is not great, and the other song is too long. But I feel like this is the best sounding Exodus record. Which no, made... I mean, I'm I'm like tapping the rhythm to this song. I can't get rid of it. Yeah, you'll have to listen to some something else to some Weird Al or something to get rid of it later. Oh, but yeah. um, yeah, I do too. But I'm saying it'll to cleanser. <laughs> Fair enough. It's a Drano for your ear holes. I apologize. Just listen. Ask... To, just put on Albuquerque. I don't have that. You need to. We probably I... need to do a Weird Al run, and that, but that would also be you know very. A lot, a lot, a lot of patience. How would you even? How would we even do that? You either do the first ten years or the last ten years. Those are the the. That's the period I care the most about. Oh, the last ten years only has two records, but they're awesome. They are, and I got a, I, I got them both. A long, long time ago. Anyway, um, never released on vinyl except for the accordion box set. It's gonna happen. So. Yeah, man, I, I don't know where you land on this one, but I, I'd say this is, to me, I know you love the last one, Pleasures, but to me, this is their second best record right now. I really, I did enjoy Pleasures. That I enjoyed Pleasures a lot more than I expected to. I expected to really dislike it. However, I did not. I I have liked each record more than the previous. The, the thing about Pleasures and Bonded by Blood, they are... Bonded by Blood especially, was a blob. It was a singular 45-minute blob. Great blob. Don't get me wrong. But that is not something that I would ever want to take a track out of or a single from. I want to sit down and just run through it. Pleasures of the Flesh, kind of the same thing. Here, the songs are far more differentiated the songs are far more personable and there's a couple shit songs to remind you that they're songs and not an amorphous blob. This is not Pink Floyd, the wall. This is not kiss music from the elder, the two greatest concept records Bob Ezrin has ever produced. I like stop, making... stop putting the elder in the same breath as the wall. Oh my God. Welcome to my nightmare. I mean, there are so many things Bob has done that are better than the Elder. Wait, are you just listing off records I have on vinyl or? No. no. I have that. I have I it. I know you do. I know you have everything. Come on. <laughs> I don't have everything. But uh, I love bringing up that one. You do. You really <laughs> like, there's an army of people out there that are like, how can I fuck with Keith today? Let me send him this gif of I was made for loving you. Um. Like that's and then there's people... just the guy that texts you uh, Lulu on vinyl. So that's this guy. Yeah. But I'm this record... An, I'm about to have an aneurysm. Seriously. Uh, I don't want that. So I'm going to go back to Exodus. This record is interesting because they finally create a great different differentiation between the tracks. There is There are dizzying highs and dick-punching lows. Cajun Hell and Lowrider are the dick-punching lows. And that is, I mean, that's fine. It's especially since 
Pleasures of the Flesh. It is a departure project, as I alluded to, as well, I said earlier. However, this is when this is the coming out party. This is when Exodus becomes far more than just that band over there. They establish themselves, they create an identity, and they have taken away, well, they've always been a little bit goofy. Although they go from Bonded by Blood, which is very metal, very metal anti-PMRC, like the PMRC needling kind of metal, which we've all seen a thousand times. They move into Pleasures of the Flesh, and which clearly was influenced by dudes that watch way too much Looney Tunes growing up. Then they move into Fabulous Disaster, and you know, they're, they're morphing into this thrash metal party band. And they're the only one like that. There's not a whole lot of fun in Thrash. So here we have Exodus saying, let's have a good time. Let's party. So I, they are, I love They it. are partying good time dudes. There's no question. Correct. And I saw Gary Holt bring out a birthday cake at a concert. At Pops, unfortunately. I felt bad that he was at Pops, but here we are. And then he told a 28 minute story about a birthday. Then I saw Testament, which was great, but fair. Um, and then I got on a plane to go to North Carolina. Okay. Charlotte or Raleigh? Raleigh. Raleigh is awesome. Charlotte's okay. Wait, maybe Charlotte. I don't know. I don't care. It was North Carolina. Ra Raleigh's awesome. Charlotte. It was a, okay. it was a work trip. It doesn't matter. But ask, ask me about how I got stuck in charlotte during a hurricane once to, on saint patty's day and i was standing outside a bar while my friend smoked and i was just the company no, I'm good. and then people thought that i was the door guy and started handing me their umbrellas and i took their money to hold their umbrellas like to let them in i, I took i took in like 200 bucks i swear everybody. to fucking go okay you know what i should have okay thank you uh we saw a movie <clears throat> I forget what movie. And I like hold the door open for the person behind me because I'm a nice guy. And they're like 80 fucking people. And, I, and they're like, oh, thank you. Thank you. And I'm like, at least they the said thank you. I'm like, take the fucking door. Someone else should take the door and let you. So I like started calling to my wife, like, hey, wait for me. Nobody's taking the door from me. And that is your life in a nutshell, sir. Next time, um, I'm going to hold the door and hold my hand out. Like, where's kind, my money, bitch? Kindness doesn't count at all. No one cares. Um, Exodus good, humans bad. Yes, Exodus is great. They are on an upward tra trajectory. They are making records. Each record not, is... Not for long. It's oh, for long. shit. I haven't yeah. heard the next one. You haven't. That's why. It's okay. We're going to do it anyway, and then we're going to end the series next week. We're going to end the series next week. We're going to announce the next series. We're probably going to have the Metallica vinyl within seven to ten days. No, we're, we're, I think we're going to have uh, two... You're, the Metallica vinyl, yes. I think we're going to have the Metallica vinyl, Chaser, new series. It's possible. I mean, we could just do... Yeah, we'll figure it out. Or we can hold the Chaser. I mean, I don't care. Yeah, we I mean, feel like the Metallica is also a chaser, but we'll talk about it. Um, I think it's my turn to take us home. Take it. Take it, baby. You have, you have nothing else, right? Nothing. I'm done. All right. Well, this has been the Glacially Musical Podcast. If you've listened this far, if you watched this far on YouTube, thank you. It is beyond shocking and humbling that you would care this much and pay this much attention. But we do love the thrash metals. Once again, I'm always joined or I am joining... The host, Nick Cameron. I am the co-host, Keefe. You can follow Nick on all the socials at Nick underscore no underscore C. I am at Ghost Cult Mag and Ghost Cult Keefe at most social media places. You follow Nick on Instagram for the vinyl porn. You follow Ghost Cult for the up-to-the-minute metal rock and news interviews and such. And as we always say at the Glacial Musical Podcast, it does not play in Peoria, but chances are Exodus hasn't either. Rocky Hockey. <laughs>